Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Revelation chapter 22. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. You imagine what a river will like without the curse. In glory. Pure. No mud. No fish poop. Pure. Other places say that it's crystal clear. Like a mirror. Clear as crystal. Proceeding out of the throne of God and of the land. So... Here's God's throne, and from that throne, there's this river. In the midst of the street of it, and on the either side of the river, shall there be the tree of life. Now we come across an interesting thing. In New Jerusalem, I don't think there's going to be dirt. I could be wrong. We read about street of gold. Is there a slight possibility that these trees will be growing out of the gold? Something to think about. On either side of the river was there the tree of life. On either side of the river was there the tree of life. Singular. But on either side of the river there is more than one. On this side of the river and that side of the river there is a tree of life. But it's one. There was a river in the Garden of Eden, Eden. There was a tree of life in the Garden of Eden. We're back to Eden in New Jerusalem. There is God amidst of us, like he was with Adam. Which bear twelve manner of fruits. And yielded her fruits fruit every month. So I don't know if this 12 man of fruit, is that's the 12 months. And it's interesting again, month, there is no time in eternity. And the, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Now, I don't know what book it was. I don't know who the author was, but this is where my... Saved Grandpa and I broke apart, divided asunder by the Word of God. Someone taught him, and he believed with his heart, that this fruit and these leaves were going to be for the churches. I see nations. I don't see churches. Or church. Or bride. Now we already seen previously, in 20 and 21, there are nations who will be not, I mean, there will be nations that their name would be found in the Lamb's Book of Life. They get the new heavens. And something about, I don't know, and I cannot explain this, but those nations that have children, as Adam and Eve were to have children, and they fell, and you know, the world became chaotic and sinful, but they were to have children. That's why God gave him the help me to make children. When these nations have children in the eternity, they will have to come and partake of this fruit. That Adam and Eve said, no. I'd rather have the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The nations are back to the salvation that God brought to Adam and Eve. For the healing of the nations. I don't, know, I don't understand what the healing is. What is the sickness? What is the need to be healed? I don't know. 
But this is not the church. Because God says, I'll wipe away their, their tears. There will be no more pain, no more suffering, and no more sin. It's not us. There will be people coming into New Jerusalem that are not the body of Christ, that are not the church. And they'll come in to worship God and the Lamb. And some of them will have to take part of this tree of life. Adam and Eve was not the church. Adam and Eve were not Jews. According to the biblical foundation of the family. If anybody who was not of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were nations, Gentiles. That's what Adam and Eve were. And they were to build a nation. But they took the wrong tree. Well, God removed that tree of knowledge of good and evil. He said, I won't even let, I'm not even going to be there no more. Now you only have one choice, the tree of life. Now, will they have the choice or will they just be have to eat it? I don't know. And there shall be no more curse. No more Genesis 3. There is no opportunity for anybody to go and take the tree of, of good and evil. That's it. No more curse. Gone. So I can't explain what the nations are going to do. I can't explain why they need this tree. Maybe they're showing their faith in God. And maybe they don't need the tree for that. But just, hey, show me your obedience. I don't know. No more curse, but the throne of God. And that wasn't with Adam and Eve. God's throne was in heaven. And of the Lamb shall be in it, New Jerusalem. And his servants shall serve him. And we saw those, it looks like those that have been in the tribulation period, both the regular and the great tribulation period. They're going to serve the Lamb day and night. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Well, there's 144,000 that had Jehovah written in their foreheads. And it says they're going to see God. Something is going to happen in with Scripture with Scripture. That the Trinity in eternity will become one. And yet still be three. And you're going to be able to see God. And Jesus. And the Holy Spirit. I cannot explain that. But even Jesus said when he was on this, on this ministry of this earth. God is a spirit. And they that worship must worship him in spirit and truth. Well there's no more spirit and truth because there we are standing before him. Faith is gone. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, no good night, no darkness. And they need no candle, no darkness, no light needed. Neither the light of the sun, nor as for the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. So God will light our light. There will be no artificial light. And this light with no darkness. Can you imagine an eternity with new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem. The entire thing, the entire. See, we can't, we can't fathom the universe. We look out with our, on a, you take tonight, there's no moon tonight. If we were to look up, we will see stars, but we are only limited to what we can see. In New Jerusalem, we're going to look up and we're just going to see light. How far? Eternally. Is God's light wherever? No suns. No stars. God's brightness is going to light up the entire new heaven. Without any limitations. Boy, there's a limitation today. And that's why that firmament showed up in Genesis 1. 
I've got you. You guys cannot see my glory. He told Moses, "You see my glory, you're going to die." If that firmament would be wiped away today, we'd be all blinded and, and deaf. That firmament is kind of protection. With Satan running around. And then Satan caused man to take the wrong tree and then sin abound. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And you found that in 21.5. And the Lord God of the holy prophets... We know who they are. Sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. What's that? The book of Revelation. This book is what's going to happen. Behold, I come quickly. Not quickly enough for me, but he comes quickly. This was written 96 AD, they say, I don't have any problem with the date. It could be, it could be not. Let's say 100, just to be, let's give it a round number, 100. 1900 years. And God has not come yet, but God says, I come shortly. And Peter says, his thousand years is not as our thousand years. His thousand years is one day, and one day is a thousand years. So... God and man are not on the same calendar. So anybody that tries a date, you don't know the dates. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he, happy is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Revelation itself. You better believe Revelations. You better hold true to Revelation. And you better study Revelation. Too many revelations. And you can't say the word anymore. So you're to keep. Proclaim the book of Revelation. Don't throw it out. And I, John, saw, again he saw, a witness, these things. What things? 22 chapters and heard them I saw and heard and when he had heard and seen I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things he's going to worship the angel then said he the angel unto me see thou do it not get up like Peter told Cornelius I am thy fellow servant. That's interesting. The angel is the fellow servant. When they ask Jesus, say, Jesus, well, this man married a wife and then he died. This wife married her brother and then he died and he married the brothers, brothers, brothers. There were seven brothers in eternity who should be her husband. He, for she had seven of them. And Jesus said, they're, never give, they're neither given to marriage. And I forget what that is. But he says, they are as equal as the angels. Now watch this. Fellow servant, read the Bible, and of thy brethren, the prophets. John was a Jew. Israel. This angel says, I am Jewish, and I am one of the prophets. The Old Testament prophet and us, we become like angels. So when John falls down before him, it's almost like he's falling down before a man. No, no, don't you do that. Even as an angel, don't you worship angels. If an angel came down to earth and you started falling down and worshiping to it, a proper angel would say, hey, get up. I'm not here for that. You go find yourself this Christian, he'll tell you what to do. Acts chapter 10. Now, if an angel falls, if you fall down before an angel and it starts saying, Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make a statue to me. Uh, write a book about me. Go get your toes. Go have relics and all that. Here's my feather. That angel is anti scriptural. And Paul says, Unlike if anybody comes preaching the gospel, whether it be an angel or that, it's anti biblical. Uh, 
He said, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, the prophets. And of them which keep the sayings of this book. In other words, this, I'm holding true to the book of Revelation. Worship God. Now look at that. John falls down. He's going to worship this man, this angel. And, and the angel says, no, get up. I'm doing the same thing you're doing. I'm in the same class you are. Worship God. Now when... when when the Pope goes around and all these leaders fall down and bow down before him, what was the ever time he told no, get up, worship God? Never. That's anti-scriptural. Acts chapter 10. And by the way, Cornelius was an Italian. Falling down before Peter, and Peter, supposedly the first Pope, said, get up. So. And he says unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecies of this book. For the time is at hand. Oh, it's been a long time, angel. So he's saying, he is saying exactly what the Roman Catholic Church did not do in the Dark Ages. They sealed the Bible and prevented the Bible to be read by the common people. And the angel tells John, you take this you take this right here this book and when you get back to Platinus you get it out and everybody you take this Bible you better have in your lifetime at your church you better study the book of Revelation at least once you know there's another place in the Bible that says that you should study I, I don't know how often you want to study it but when Mary wiped his feet with her hair and broke that spitnar that, that had the sweet savor of smell for his death. Didn't Jesus say that wherever this is read, it will be a memorial to her? You ought to have a message about Mary humbling herself before Jesus Christ. Lord's Supper is called a memorial. That should be done as often as you think it should be done. So don't seal up the Bible. Don't seal up the book of Revelation. I am called by God in my ministry of street preaching to tell them about Revelation. The hell, the lake of fire, the great tribulation to come. I'm called by God. He that is unjust, not right, let the unjust still. So, let him be unjust still. So, you don't want justice of God. You don't want to do right. Do what you want to do. How's that sound? That's God saying that. He which is filthy. Let him be filthy still. Hey, you want to be dirty? You want to have a filthy mouth? You want to be unclean? Go ahead. It's the free will. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. My righteousness is of Jesus Christ. So I ought to be of Jesus Christ all the time. I'm not to be unjust. I am not to be filthy. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And there are two classifications of people. There's the lost and there's the saved. You're lost and you want to do whatever you want to do, go for it. I already told you in chapter 20 what's going to happen to you. You want to do it? Go ahead. And when the books are open, you're fine wanting. But if you're righteous and if you're holy, I am by Jesus Christ. I better remain, I better not be unjust, and I better not be filthy. Behold, I come quickly. That's Jesus Christ now speaking. And my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. For the church age, that's already happened to the judgment seat of Christ. When the people are standing in the great white throne judgment, and their name is in the book. 
they will get rewards that are entitled to them. Those prophets in the Old Testament that lost their lives, that people did not help them, people did not take care of them, they had to live in caves in Hebrews 11. They've got a reward coming. And they will get it at the Great White Throne Judgment. All those that do right are going to get a reward. Christian or Old Testament or the Gentiles in the Old Testament that, that did what God told them to do. I am Alpha and Omega. That's Jesus Christ, the beginning and the end. There's two Greek words that God wants you to know. Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. So he explained to you what those words were. Some churches take it as you got to put everything in the Greek. No. God has given us enough Greek to say, hey, that's what I want you to know. Other than that, you don't need to know. The first and the last. Blessed, happy are they that do his commandments. And there are commandments to the church too, First John. That they may have right to the tree of life. That's not us. So these are people in the eternity having to do works to come through the, the gates of New Jerusalem and partake of this tree. That's not the church. And I tried to teach my grandpa that. We are not saved of works. Galatians 2, 6 and 7, or 7 and 8. Not of works, at least any man should boast. That rules out the church. And I can't go any further about sin and the nation and the eternity. I don't know. But there is a work element. That they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter in through the gate. Plural, we saw there were 12 of them into the city. For without our dogs, dogs are unclean. Dogs are not in New Jerusalem. And First Peter says the dog has returned to his vomit, the sow has returned to her mud. They're talking about false teachers. Dogs were called dogs by the Jews in reference to the Gentiles. When that woman who was a Gentile came to Jesus, help my daughter. He says, listen, I'm here for the people of Israel. And I'm not here for the dogs. And she said, well, the dogs eat under the table, the crumbs. And that stopped him in his tracks. We're still unreferenced as far as that dog. We're, we're talking about the Gentiles. For without our dogs, where are they? They're in the lake of fire. And sorcerers. There are no sorcery, if that's a word, or magic or horoscopes in heaven. You cannot have Christian magic, or there's probably Christian horoscopes. It's against God. You will not find it. You will not walk the street of gold in New Jerusalem and find a booth with a woman there who's going to read your palm or look into her crystal ball. There'll be no tarot cards in New Jerusalem. Sorcery is gone if that's a word and whoremongers no paid sex no whoring yourself for money like actors and actresses do I'll do anything you want me to do to be on that screen if you give me a paycheck that's someone who sells their body we got where we go down and, and uh, on Friday night we got a, a restaurant there that those women will get paid to be three quarters naked and they get a paycheck for it and that's a whore you are being paid to expose your body and there's other things involved with that but 
That's a whore. None of that will be happening in New Jerusalem. And murderers. There will be no murderers, no killing in New Jerusalem. Idolaters. Those aids of worships will not be found in New Jerusalem. Outside the 12 gates of New Jerusalem, you're not going to see Mary on the half shell. That's gone. You won't see a big fat God who couldn't control his weight and his diet. You won't find that. No idolaters. And whosoever, oh look at that, whosoever, whosoever believes on the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever was not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life of Catholic, whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. There will be no liars in glory. Politicians, used car salesmen, and anybody who, who tells a story to get a laugh. No comedians. They will lie to the people so you can laugh and there will be no liars. You can trust everything that everyone says for once. Try that today. I, Jesus, have sent my angel. So even Jesus has an angel. So would you go far as to say we got a guardian angel from the Bible? I don't know how far you would take the guardian part because it's not the angel that protects us he would be an angel that reports back to God uh, we got trouble down here this guy he, he's getting to a terrible thing here and I would not put all whatever happens to us upon that angel the Bible says an angel is a messenger of God a minister of God and I, my safely assume is he would report to God or Jesus about the person that he's over. But, you know, as far as the angels, you know, you're about to walk out in, in traffic and the car is about to hit you. As far as that angel putting his hand out, stopping the car, no. Absolutely not. You know, you're about to drink poison and the angel knocks the cup over. No. Because go back to Elijah. They're sitting down at the table. Somebody had gone out and got some wild gourds. And they started eating. And they said, there's poison in the pot. Now maybe the angel uh, they spoke, hey, you know, they're about to eat poison. Put it in their ear. He said, well, how do you know something like that happens? When you read the story in Genesis about Jacob getting the blessing off Jacob, I mean, uh, Isaac. And when Isaac comes back, you know, he gets the lower blessing. He gets angry. And he said, the Bible says, in his heart, I'm going to kill that boy, Esau. I'm going to kill, I'm going to kill Jacob. When my father is deaf, is passed on, and we're done mourning him, Jacob is dead. And the next thing we read is the Bible says that God spoke to Rebekah and said, Esau does not have a good heart to Jacob, and since he's been blessed, you got to protect him. So, I'm going to say yes, but the angel is not going to do anything to do the protection. But again, there again, there was an angel that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah at the word of God. I don't want to limit the angels, and yet I don't want to give them too much power. And Jesus said in Matthew that as far as the children, they're angels. And any parent knows that there is a time when you go have checking on that child. What was it that spoke to you? They get up and go look. And you find that child in a predicament that is very hazardous, that needed your attention. Would you say that was an angel? Yes, I would. Jesus has sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. So, the angel that's been speaking to John is Jesus' angel. And he wants to speak to the churches. That's us. 
Go ye all the world and preach the gospel that they may not go through the tribulation, that they may not end up at the great white throne judgment lost and go into the lake of fire. I am the root and the offspring of David. And we, we can follow that. Matthew chapter 1, Luke chapter 3. And the bright and morning star. That's the star that comes up before the sun. That's our star for the church age. Coming up and calling us home. The second advent is when the sun rises. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the bride say, all right, this is the Holy Spirit and us, the Christians, say, Come. We're to tell people, come. Isaiah 1.13 or is it 18? Come, let us reason again. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Come. And let him that heareth say, come. Tell them. And they're listening. Tell them, come. And let him that is a thirst, come. Check out the word come in your Bible and see how often it has to do with the ministry, even the Old Testament, of Jesus Christ. It's a remarkable word, come. And whosoever, there's a, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And whosoever will, you don't force them. If somebody were to step out at the farmer's market and say, Hey, I want to do what you've been preaching. Fine. Here's a, here's a Bible. We'll show you what you need to do. I am not to go running through the crowds with a gun and say, Trust Jesus Christ or I'm going to shoot you. And it don't say anything about having entertainment. It says, Say, come. Say, come. There's no entertaining in talking. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Jesus says, I'm the living waters. Bring the Christ that they may drink the salvation. You realize that woman at the well, John chapter 4, she drank that day of the living waters and she did not get a drink to her lips. And she brought men that got the taste of the living water, and they did not have a glass. And when he stayed with them in the city for a while, they of the city drank of the water and did not have a rope and had part of Jesus Christ. That's what we're supposed to give the people. You're not going to get a, any water at all in hell. Come and get it now and be saved by Jesus Christ. For I testify unto every man. Every man. All, it doesn't say all men. It says every man. You know when it says. Oh, I forget which king it was with Daniel in the lion's den. When it says when he called out Daniel. He said Daniel alive. Yeah, King, I'm all right. Everything good. God sent his angel. He protected me from these lions. Oh, these beds were nice. Thank you, King. I never could night's sleep. He brought Daniel out. And he cast those people that condemned Daniel. And it says they were put in there and the lions had mastery and broke all their bones. And I fought a preacher in California saying, it all means all and all means that. I said, really? You mean to tell me that the lion broke every single hammer, anvil, and I forgot the name of the third bone that's in here? Every single bone. This one says every. There's a difference between every and all. Every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. I got you to lay on get dark. So if you hear Revelation, there's some people that may not hear it. But if you heard Revelation, 
You should. He just told the church, unseal the book and get it out. And if you don't do that as a Christian, you're going to find wood, hay, or stubble. You're not doing what Jesus told you to do. Verse 16 to the churches. Come, come, come. Whosoever will, let him drink of that water freely. But if he hears revelation, if any man shall add unto these things. All right. Get a modern version Bible of Revelation and match it with the King James Bible. If there's anything extra that is not in the King James Bible, they have added to the book of Revelation. Okay? God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. I want to mess with God in his word. If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, Revelation. So get your modern Bibles and match it with the King James Bible. If there's anything missing, watch this. God shall take away his part of the book of life. And out of the holy city, New Jerusalem. And from the things which are written in this book. Matthew 24, 34, Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. Now, I'm not going to get on this because this is. I'm going to just give you a warning because I'm not, I don't know exactly what this says. But there's some things in here about losing salvation. There's stuff in here that God is just going to massively mess with your with you and as far as well there are people who who changed the bible and they haven't had the plagues written in this book upon their life they and yet if they're in hell today isn't that enough of a plague that outrides revelation it would go so far to say that anybody who's messed with the bible revelation especially god does not count them saved That's what it says. Your name will be out of the Lamb's Book of Life. You will not enter into New Jerusalem. How? Why? Because you took away the words. You take away the words, God says, I'll take away my salvation. And I hold strong, strong. Any man who has changed the Bible, I will not count them saved. I could be wrong, but what I just read... But let's get back on the good news here. He, Jesus, which testify these things, say it. Now, wouldn't, wouldn't you have a great source and faith if Jesus said something? Do you think that you could bring, and it won't happen, but, but if you could bring Jesus in the courtroom and he will testify with the book of Revelation and say it's going to happen, you would have to say, okay, yes, Jesus is correct. I'm the way, the truth, and the light, said Jesus. So Jesus testifies. Surely, for sure, I come quickly. And do you realize with that statement right there, many have fallen away? Oh, God hasn't come quickly. It's, look how many years it's been. He doesn't say when. He just says, I come quickly. God's quickly is not our quickly. Again, it shows you our time frame, our thoughts. And the Bible says our thoughts are not as God's thoughts. And this is the same realm of prayer. Well, God, will you answer this, this, this prayer I got? Yeah, I'm answering it. Well, now. No, not yet. Not ready. Take your time. And with things in our life and the miserable things that happens to us, we're like, God, do something. And God's up there calm. He's got his fingernails. He's not biting them. And like I said, let's take, for instance, this was written 100 AD, just a round number. It says 96. 1900 years. And, God, and Jesus says, I come quickly. 
So we are not to expect God to answer our prayer. God, please help me right now. Okay, God, I got my watch. I'm looking. That's 15 seconds, God. That's 30 seconds, God. We can't and will not ever rush God. He's patient. He's holy. And the Bible calls that long-suffering. God is not willing that any should perish. So God hasn't come yet because not everybody has heard the word. Not everybody who's to be saved has gotten saved yet. I come quickly. Watch John. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Where's John going? He's going back to Platinus. He's going back into a painful body. What does John say? John has heard this great revelation. Now let's go back to 22, 10. And he says unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. And he said, you know, go out and say to the people. So John has been told, you're to preach this book. You're to get this book out. He hears Jesus say, even so come quickly. He says, amen, come on, Lord Jesus, come. But he forgot you got to go get that book out first, John. I like the excitement. Uh, but I'm not going to come yet because that book has not been put out yet. You haven't even written that book yet. You haven't finished that book yet. Wait, John. See, even John forgot. Oh, yeah, i got something to do. And John has been long gone dead. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. And he hasn't lost faith. Neither should we. Even so, come Lord Jesus, the grace that we don't deserve of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all since he's not going to come as quickly as you think he's going to be coming. God's going to give us grace. Amen. And one last thing, I don't know if your Bibles have it, but if your Bible has the end, cross that out because it's not the end. Because we just go on for all eternity. That, that parable son that came back to the father. Father, I repent, man. I, I'm not worthy to be called your son. Uh, make me as one of your hired servants. The father went, got the best clothes. Put shoes on his back. Killed the fatted uh, uh, calf. Oh, sorry for him. And they were partying. They were dancing. And the, the, old, the older son come in and said, What's all this noise here? What's all this celebrating? What's going on? And the father said, your, 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 son, your brother's come back, blah, 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 blah. He's upset because you never gave me a party. But when did that celebration ever end? The chapter closes and that celebration never stopped. The book of Revelation closes and the celebration is never going to quit. Neither is those that are suffering in the lake of fire. They're still suffering and we're still celebrating. It's not the end. It will never, ever, ever be the end. Ever. You would say they live happily ever after in Christ Jesus. They suffered for all eternity, serving Satan, and they just go on. What a glorious thing. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He will come. He may come during your time. He may not. But he's coming. Don't give up on that.